And then last but not least, we're going to look at a field pig. Um, for that, um, you're going to have a video of a pig dissection. And I imagine some of you are quite happy about the fact that we're not actually going to do a fetal pig. Um, but what we're going to learn from the fetal pig is a lot of anatomical references. Um, some, um, you know, some anatomical references for direction, you know, that this is the cranial region, this is the pectoral region, this is the pelvic region and all of that. Um, what dorsal and ventral um, look like, anterior and posterior, um, what the different planes are, that there's the transverse plane that, that cuts the animal in half like this. Um, then side to side, you have the sagittal plane um, cutting it. Um, front and back, um, that's the frontal plane. So um, those are the kinds of terms I want you to know, because um, some of them actually appear in the key. So you're going to have to use those terms to know what the key means, or at least recognize those terms. Um, but the real reason why we want to look at the pig is because the pig is a lot like, um, like a human in terms of a lot of the internal structures it has. So um, I want you to look at the parts that, that, that are part of the digestive system. So, you know, you've got the oral cavity where the food comes in, it goes to the esophagus, uh, it goes to the stomach, um, and then from the stomach it goes to the small intestines first, um, where some food is being absorbed, um, and then goes to the large intestines where uh, water is being uh, taken out because water needs to be preserved, because uh, we need water for all kinds of reaction in our body. Um, then it's stored in the rectum for a little while before it's expelled in the anus. There are accessory organs to the digestive system that help us with digestion. Um, there's the liver. Um, the liver has many, many, many functions in your, in your body. Um, it helps with digestion of fat. Um, it also detoxifies everything. So actually from your small intestines, um, you're, you've probably heard that your small intestines absorbs, um, absorbs all your food. Um, and, and teachers do a terrible job at, at not making connections for students. So we, we talk about the digestive system, right? And yeah, the, that the small intestines absorbs the food and then you never hear about this food again. Where, where does it go? I mean, it goes to the blood, but now what? Well, it turns out it goes to the blood in the mesentery in the small intestine. And that's one of the things we're going to look at the fetal pig. I'm going to show you what the mesentery looks like. Well, I hope I'm going to show you what the mesentery looks like. In, in lab, I show you what the mesentery, I literally pull the mesentery off the fetal pig and show you what it looks like. It's this tiny mesh of tiny, tiny, tiny blood vessels. And they all collect together and they ship the blood to the liver um, with a huge portal vein at that point. And then it gets detoxified in the liver. So that's the first place your blood goes. Um, if there's sugar there, you know, it, it can get stored right there. So the liver is, is a key player um, in, in a lot of functions in your body. Um, the pancreas is another key player. It, um, it releases insulin, which helps you um, with blood sugar. We all know about that, right? Um, but students generally don't know what insulin actually does. I mean, we know it lowers blood sugar, but I, I often ask my students, how does it do that? What does it do? And, and the usual assumption is it breaks it down. No, it does not. Why would you just break it down? That's silliness. I mean, because you, you've done all this work to try to get, you know, glucose in your blood because you need the glucose in your blood for energy. You need it to go to the mitochondria, which are in your cells, which need to power all of your cells. So it's somehow got to get into the cells. The glucose is important. The reason why we don't want it in the blood is it's no good in the blood. It needs to go in the cells. Um, and that's exactly what your insulin does. Your insulin helps with the sugar going into the cell where it needs to be. Um, and so that's those are the kinds of things I want you to understand when you're going through this um, fetal pig. Um, then we, we look at the respiratory system and we've probably never had as much um, interest in the respiratory system since we've um, gotten the whole 
COVID-19 thing going. Um, but so the, the air goes in the nasal cavity and it goes down the trachea. And um, one of the things I want you to look at in the lab uh, or pay attention to is the trachea versus the esophagus. Um, form in um, biology oftentimes follows function. So you can tell what something is supposed to do and how it does it by the way it looks. And the trachea looks very different from the esophagus because it has a very different function. Um, then your lungs, they have these huge um, sacs of air because all of, all of respiration is diffusion. It's only air diffusing into your blood. Um, so you need, you need the, the, those little um, alveoli to be fine, right? Yet they need to work well. They need to exist. If they're clumped up, that doesn't work. But if something's wrong with your blood, this is also not going to work because the, these are tiny little capillaries. And if your blood, for some reason, can't go in these capillaries, you, you're not going to breathe or you're not going to be able to get oxygen anywhere. Um, if your blood's not working right. So if your blood is clumping, for example, then, you know, it's, it's not going to move in the places. And this is actually one of the reasons why diabetics have issues with their feet. Um, it's because with all that sugar in their blood, the blood is thicker than it needs to be. Um, and when it's thicker than it needs to be, uh, it can't go through the itsy bitsy little tiny capillaries to bring, um, um, bring oxygen where it needs to go. Um, and so it, it, that's part of what the problem is. The circulatory system, since we're talking about blood, the circulatory system is the thing that brings your heart, uh, your, your blood everywhere. So you've got your, we've got the different heart chambers that, that we're going to be looking at. Um, we've got the aorta, aorta um, we've got the, um, the, uh, the veins and the arteries. Now, the thing with the veins and the arteries, you usually think of veins as being oxygen poor and arteries being oxygen rich, but that's not actually what the definition is. The definition is as arteries are the things that go away from the blood and veins go to uh, from uh, away from the heart and veins go towards the heart. Um, and so one of the things uh, you need to be cognizant of is that there's at least one um blood vessel that is a vein that is actually oxygen rich i.e it goes towards the heart but it also carries a lot of oxygen um, and that's the vein that's coming from your um from your lungs to the heart so the vein that carries the oxygen to the heart from your lungs that's a vein but it's oxygen rich it's called your pulmonary vein and it's oxygen rich um and here oh this is this this picture is is i actually put that there just so that you see this whole mesenteric bed right so here's the mesentery coming from um coming from your um intestines um and feeding into your liver which then feeds uh the blood around into the other parts um, and that's it for the lecture. So uh, there's a couple of things I want you to look at in terms of the lab part, the kind of three parts to this to this lab section. So there is the fetal pig part, um, there's the skulls, um, and then just the dichotomous key. So you know how to do a dichotomous key. And that's really it for today. <laughs>